Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today I want to make some improvements to my portable ham radio vertical antenna that I made about a month or so ago. So if you missed the first video, what this antenna is, is it's a vertical uh, POTA antenna or parks on the air antenna that I constructed using some surplus military poles and some tape measures that I got at Harbor Freight. Now the radiating element that I used was some old THHN wire that I had picked up from Home Depot and I needed to kind of trim that a little bit. I think it was a little too short so I needed to make it a little bit longer and I wanted to use a new piece of wire. The wire that I had there was kind of old and it was kinked and it was actually frayed in a few spots so it's time to put a new piece of wire. The next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to improve the base interface, which I'll show you guys that in a minute. And then the last thing that I wanted to do was make another, a second radiating element cut for 15 meters. Now, let's see what we can do here. It's a little bit chilly out today, so I'm not sure how far I'll get, but uh, we'll give it a shot. So first up, hopefully you can see it there in the driveway. I've got my old radiating element, which is the wire that's all kind of kinked and looped around there, laid out next to a brand new piece of wire. And you can see there's the spool. I just picked that up at Home Depot a little while ago. Uh, 500 feet of 14 gauge THHN wire. I think that spool was under $50 and I'll make tons of antennas out of that spool. So anyway, I've got the two side by side. I'll stretch out the old one and then measure out a length of new wire against the old one. So I don't remember the exact length of the old wire. I think it's about 16 and a half feet. I could go get my tape measure and measure it, I suppose, but I'm just going to eyeball this and just add a few inches to the new wire since I knew that the old one was just a touch too short. So if I add a couple inches to the new one, it should be just fine. So the next thing I wanted to improve was the interface between the pole and the base of the antenna here in relationship to the piece of rebar that kind of supports everything. Now in the first video I mentioned that I didn't have any kind of a coupler and I was just using a piece of PVC pipe in here to kind of keep everything steady and it was okay. It wasn't bad but it did kind of wobble around a little bit. So what I've done is I've come up with a way to improve this at least until I can find the right kind of coupler. I'm hoping that in the spring when I can hit one of the ham fests where the guy that sells these poles is there I can either find a coupler or I can just get another pole and then sacrifice the other end of it and make a coupler out of it. But until then I think what I'm about to show you will work. So what I've come up with is this. I found this piece of steel pipe in my plumbing box and I've wrapped some electrical tape around it to kind of build up the diameter. I suppose I could have done the same thing with that piece of PVC pipe I was using, but this is going to be a little sturdier since it is steel. So now all I'm going to do is drop this over the rebar and then fit that down into the base. And you can see that that built up area with electrical tape kind of keeps it in there pretty well. So then I'll just drop this pole over and you can see that that fits snugly over the other pieces of electrical tape that are wrapped around there. It kind of holds things together a little better than they were. So I've got some ring terminals crimped and soldered on to the wire. Let's get this thing stood up, deploy the radials, and then put it on the analyzer and see what it looks like. Okay, so things are looking pretty good on 20 meters now. You can see right about in the center of the band or so, I've got a resistance of about 56 ohms, no reactants, and SWR is 1.0. If I tune down a little bit, you can see it goes down to the bottom of the band pretty well. And if I go to the top end of the band here, you can see it goes up a little bit but I think we're still quite usable. Oh, and I almost forgot, I've got all the tape measures set up at about 16 and a half feet. 
if I tweak those one way or the other, we can probably dial this in a little bit if we needed to, but I think it's looking pretty good right about where it is now. Okay, now that I've got 20 meters all set, let's measure out and cut an element for 15 meters. I did some rough math, and I think we want about an 11 foot piece of wire. I'm actually gonna use my tape measure radial and my spool of wire here, and I'm gonna measure out about 11 feet, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got the 15 meter element all measured out and tied off. Let's get this thing stood up, throw it on the analyzer and see how it looks. Okay, so I'm about ready to do some testing. You can see I've got both wires on the pole here. Now I'm not sure what happened. I didn't change the length of the rope on the 20 meter element, but it seems a little bit loose now. So I'm gonna have to tighten up the rope a bit. And truth be told, the 15 meter element is a little bit too slack too, but I think it's gonna be good enough for testing. So what I'm gonna do now is shorten up all the radials to about 11 feet, and then we'll test it on the analyzer and see what happens. Okay, so we're taking a look at 15 meters here and you can see roughly up and down the band, things are looking okay. Not perfect, not as quite as good as they were on 20, but things are looking okay. I think if I adjust the radiating element a little bit and maybe play with the length of the radials, we can probably dial this in so it's just a touch better, but this is pretty usable right where it is. Okay, so I've come up with one more improvement for the antenna here. I wanted to come up with some kind of a wire guide to keep the wires from tangling. As I put the antenna up, the wires kind of twist a little bit, and then I have to untwist them to keep them separate. So I thought that what I could do is put these little pieces of conduit that I've cut onto the poles, and then I can run the wires through them, and then that'll keep them from tangling up. So anyway, I'm gonna make up one set of these for each pole and put them roughly in the center of the pole. So I'm just making these spacers out of a scrap old piece of conduit that I had laying around. As far as the length goes, I'm cutting these maybe about an inch, inch and a half long or so. And I'm just eyeballing it to kind of get them close to each other. It's not real critical how long they are. And as you can see, I'm just using this pipe cutter to cut the conduit. As you can see, I'm using a zip tie here to hold these on roughly in the center length of the tube. Okay, so I've got one zip tie sort of snugged up and then I'm gonna flip this around and I'll set the other one up so that it exits on the opposite side of the tube just to help even out the distribution of the forces here. Once I have those roughly where I want them, I'm gonna use my zip tie tool to tension and cut the ties. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of this E6000 glue, and I'm gonna glue just the zip tie to the piece of conduit. Now the reason I'm gonna do that is because I don't wanna glue the conduit pieces to the pole in case this doesn't work out or I wanna use these for some other thing where this would get in the way. But the glue will help hold everything together and keep it from sliding around. And I can use my cut pieces of zip tie to just help spread this in a little bit. Okay, so I've got the wires all routed through the guides. Now one thing I didn't think through was the insulators at the top can't pass through <laughs> the little diameter of the guides. So I had to untie them and retie them. Now the more that I think about it, I realize I really don't even need those insulators at the end. I can eliminate the insulators in the hardware and just tie the paracord directly to the ring terminal. So. I'll probably do that next time, but for right now I still have the insulators in. I just untied them, slipped the ropes through the guides, and then retied them where they fit. Anyway, let's stand this up and see how it works. Okay, so I've got the antenna all put together here. You can see the wires are through the guides and everything's looking good. So what I ended up doing is I got rid of those insulators that were up at the top part of the wire. I really didn't need them. I'm not even sure why I used them in the first place, but I've just got the paracord tied off to the ring terminals now so that they can just slip through each one of the guides. Okay, so down here at the feed point, you can see that I've put some electrical tape on the wires so I know which one is which. This is the 15 meter element 
and this is the 20 meter element. So I've got everything dialed in pretty well. I've got both elements cut for roughly the center of their respective bands. And I've been over on the analyzer checking it out. For experimentation purposes, I decided to extend all of the radials out to about 24 feet and do a sweep uh, up the hand bands with my analyzer here. And the results are kind of interesting. So starting off on 160 meters, you can hopefully see there that things aren't too bad. I could probably use it with a tuner. Not sure how well it would work, but certainly worth an experiment just to see. It sure would be a lot of fun to work 160 meters on a POTA activation. So anyway, I'm gonna sweep up the band a bit and see what we get. Okay, so if we take a look at 75 and 80 meters, you can see things are looking about the same. Could probably tune this up with a tuner and use it there as well. Okay, so even 40 meters isn't looking too bad here. Put a tuner on here and I think we'd be able to use it. So up here at 20 meters, things are looking pretty good. I could shorten up the radials and get the resistance right around 50 if I wanted to, but even without doing that, I think it would work just fine here, even without a tuner. 17 meters actually isn't looking too bad either. Uh, probably want to get a tuner on there just to touch it up, but it's actually not too bad, all things considered. Probably playing with the length of those radials might even dial this in enough and you wouldn't need a tuner. And up here again at 15 meters, things are actually looking pretty good, even with the radials out at 24 feet. 12 meters isn't looking too bad. Again, maybe playing with the radials would allow us to use this without a tuner, but probably could throw a tuner on here just to touch it up and it would be just fine. And if I head all the way up to 10 meters, again, things are actually looking pretty decent. A little bit of tuner action and we'd be good to go. So actually six meters isn't looking too bad. We could probably be able to get away with that without a tuner. This would be a fun band to use for a POTA activation, especially up on a hilltop. Not exactly sure how well it would work being ground mounted, but I'm sure we'd make a few contacts. And then even two meters is actually looking pretty decent. Again, that would be a fun band to activate on sideband for a POTA activation. Not sure how well the antenna would work being on the ground, but if you're up on top of a hill, maybe it would be okay. Definitely worth a test. I've got the antenna uh, right about where I want it, I think, at least according to the analyzer. I'm anxious to get this thing on the air and do some testing, but I think that's gonna have to wait for another day. The sun is going down behind the hill over there and I've got to get some chores finished around here before it does. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.